Blood clots are made up of a mesh of red blood cells and platelets held together by a protein called fibrin. They form through a complicated cascade of clotting factors. These factors are activated by tissue damage and there are two distinct pathways involved. The intrinsic pathway, which is activated by blood coming into contact with collagen fibers in the broken wall of a blood vessel. And the extrinsic pathway, which is activated by the release of tissue factor during cell damage. However, both of these lead to the same final stage, known as the common pathway. Here, glossing factor 10 is activated to factor 10A and converts the enzyme prothrombin to thrombin. Thrombin acts on fibrinogen, which is a soluble glycoprotein found in the blood. Fibrinogen is converted to fibrin, a non-soluble protein which, along with platelets and red blood cells, forms the clot, also known as a thrombus. But the mechanisms that generate useful clots can also generate harmful clots, and this is known as thrombosis. Thromboses can obstruct the flow of blood, depriving vital organs of oxygen. Clotting can be prevented with drugs targeting either platelets or the clotting cascade, which this animation focuses on. Heparin, one of the oldest anticoagulants, is administered intravenously and works by activating antithrombin-3, which inhibits thrombin and factor 10A. Warfarin, another older anticoagulant, is administered orally and inhibits an enzyme that makes vitamin K available for several of the clotting factors, preventing them from becoming biologically active. However, it takes time for inactive forms to accumulate, which gives warfarin a slow onset of action. Patients also have to be particularly careful of their vitamin K intake, so patient monitoring is important when taking the drug. In the past 15 years, scientists have developed a new generation of anticoagulants called non-vitamin K antagonist oral anticoagulants, or NOACs. These drugs can also be taken orally, without the need for monitoring, and have fewer dietary interactions than older drugs. They're also more specific in their targeting of the clotting cascade, with some binding directly to and inhibiting factor 10A. This prevents the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin, which prevents the formation of fibrin and the thrombus. Another type of NOAC acts by binding to and directly inhibiting the action of both free and fibrin-bound thrombin. Research is demonstrating that the NOACs are at least as effective and possibly safer than warfarin. Reversal agents can be vital if patients experience excessive bleeding or require emergency surgery. These are currently being developed and approved, meaning that the NOACs will increasingly become first-choice anticoagulants in the battle against thrombosis.